Our next storyteller is John Poplett, and he's been here before. He's a great story about a, a road trip that he took on a bicycle. You're just gonna love him. He's a great storyteller. Please give it up for John Poplett. I like a thing that most people have, an ambition filter. Something like the safety valve that manufacturers build into pressure cookers to prevent them from blowing up the kitchen. That almost explains why in 2021, I purchased the internet domain bike2endivisions.org with the grandiose ambition of riding the length of the Santa Fe Trail from Independence, Missouri to Santa Fe, New Mexico, a distance of 1,600 miles, most of it paved on a bicycle. It would be for a good cause to end social and political division, which was making and still makes everybody miserable in this country. I would take pledges to raise money for a charity to honor the life of George Floyd. And I had prefer, performed a similar stunt before when I raised $40,000 for Thrive, a mental health organization in Oak Park, pedaling the length of the Grand Illinois Trail, a circuit just shy of 600 miles in nine days. On that journey, I fixed a lot of flats sometimes two in a day. I hoisted my bike on my shoulders to Fortis Creek that had jumped the banks, its banks and covered the trail with rushing water. Made it through the hills of Galena with two broken spokes and a wheel that wobbled so badly I had to uncouple the brake. On that trip, I had proved what I was capable of. Sure, that was a shorter distance and I was younger and fitter, but considering the cause, healing division, while the memory of George Floyd still lingered in our short attention span nation, seemed urgent. I would have God on my side. What could go wrong? <laughs> in need of a charity worthy of George Floyd, I hopped on my bike and rode to West Town Bikes on the west side to kick its tires, so to speak. West Town already had a reputation for a commitment to the healthy development of Chicago's youth. In the shop window, I started a Black Lives Matter poster on my way inside to meet Executive Director Alex Wilson. West Town Bikes exuded a meditative call, as all good bike shops do. I could see how this space might provide sanctuary for young people. On that, warm, on that particular warm summer day, I could see that it was not just cool inside, but a very cool place to hang out. Alex explained how the shop taught young people to fix their own bikes or trained them with the skills required to become mechanics. He described West Town's program, which safely teaches kids to ride bikes safely in the city, and how in the summer, chaperones weekly take groups of kids out on adventures to see parts of the city they might not otherwise ever see, not even once in a lifetime. That sounded like a lot of life-changing potential. By the end of our chat, I was utterly convinced of the worthiness of West Town Bikes and a believer in its mission. As summer inched forward, fires broke out in spots close to the trail in dry states, in the dry states of Colorado and New Mexico. The distance, 1,600 miles, had started to gnaw at this hippocampus, that teeny, tiny, rational part of the brain, until it started a rumor in my skull that maybe 1,600 miles was a wee bit too far. <laughs> I shifted my sights instead on Lake Michigan. I mean, think about it. It went around in a circle. If I chose Lake Michigan, I wouldn't have to schlep myself a bicycle and a bunch of gear back from New Mexico on a train or a bus. And there would be plenty of bike shops in reach for impromptu repairs. Plus, it was only 900 miles. Before even pedaling my first stroke, I would be 700 miles to the good. That cinched it. I was going to ride in a charming circuit around the lake instead. I knew even that the I knew even then that the key to everything is preparation. It still I undertrained, banking on the beguiling idea of quote unquote, writing myself into shape. 
For this ride, the greatest number of miles I tackled in a single day, tuning up, were a mere 40. For the Grand Illinois Trail, my tune-up was a century ride with bricks in my panniers. I geared up. I bought a bike trailer on eBay, upgraded it with a new wheel and bungee cords, bought a tricked-out Garmin cycle computer, pieced together a route, bought a radar equipped taillight to alert me of cars approaching from behind, picked out three changes of spandex shorts and jerseys, purchased new water bottles, a frame lock for coffee shops in the daytime, took a hefty U-lock for security my bike at night. I commissioned the local bike shop to build an extra sturdy rear touring wheel with a high spoke count. I packed a box of flavored electric light packets, rain gear, a camera, and a credit card. When the owner of Reed Plumbing came out to my apartment to give me a quote on a new hot water heater, I did not have a single pledge for the ride. I had two bike racks, bikes racked on a stack in, in the front, near the front door. As I soon explained my fundraising raising ambitions to Chris, he pulled out his billfold and handed me a hundred dollar bill. It was one of the, those propitious moments in life that makes everything worthwhile. I, we have, Chris and I have been friends ever since. By the time I set out, I only had limited experience with the trailer and none with the kind of weight I was lugging. I took Augusta Boulevard to, from Oak Park to the lake to an underpass that would take me to the path along the beach where I would turn north. There was a ramp by the side of the stairs which took me to the bottom, though the weight of my gear propelled me, the bike and the trailer down to the bottom fast. I landed in a heap. It took me 45 dejected minutes on my first day to straighten out my gear and get in the lakeside where I could finally turn north. With sun all around me, its beams knocked the foul mood right out of me. Nevertheless, my unpreparedness and other big unknowns weighed on me. I hadn't packed a tent. I was committed to making reservations at motels and B&Bs on the fly, patching my way forward. These concerns seemed to add an extra 50 pounds to the 40 I was already lugging. Even on a sunny day, these invisible clouds hovered overhead. The, the trip took the rhythms of an epic adventure. The highs were very high and the lows pretty darn low. I'd start conversations with people who, like Chris, would spontaneously reach into their pants or jersey pocket to hand me 20 or 20 bucks for the cause. I rode through visual artifacts of social division. In the colorful parts of New Milwaukee, Black Lives Matter signs prevailed. In the wider suburbs, the signs read, at the badge. I rode through Kenosha, where I had gone racing many times over many years, at the velodrome in Washington Park to discover a charming wharf and what every blue collar community craves, a yacht club. I went through the part of town where vigilante Kyle Rittenhouse shot and killed two persons. Reaching the waterfront town of Port Washington in a big splash of light seemed like a shining accomplishment until I ran into a chatty fellow cyclist who warned me in a paradoxically chipper voice of people farther north who were QAnon devotees and not so friendly, who were likely to pull up next to me in a van, drag me off into the shadows of a, shallows of a ditch, pummel me, and leave me for dead. I've long forgotten how that conversation ended. <laughs> I forget even if he wished me good luck. I rested an extra day in Green Bay before heading toward my date with the Upper Peninsula, where lodgings were few and far between, the distance is greater, the hills hillier, and the ferry, which once upon a time used to shuttle bicycle riders from Canada back to Michigan, was shut down. Now the new best way to return to the U.S. was to hitch a ride with a truck driver. Despite all, I had my best day in the saddle, in a light drizzle, out in the countryside where the fish literally were jumping, I latched onto the back of a group of fast moving club riders and snitched a few relaxing miles from them in their slipstream. 
I started to feel like I was writing myself back into shape. Of course, in a slipstream, the wind is always behind you, your joints stop aching, your skin grows smooth, your hair grows back. <laughs> Brooke Shields calls you on your cell and passes you on to her daughter. In Oconto, Wisconsin, I stop for the night in the Econo Lodge and relax by watching American Gladiators in my room until I discovered a hole in the bottom of my foot. It looked bad, like a squirrel had tried to bury an acorn in it. I called my daughter, Allison, and asked her if she thought I should continue. Dad, you're not going anywhere. I'll pick you up in the morning. The medical folks called it an ulcer, a persistent wound common in diabetics and persons with circulation problems. It was a struggle. I had to dress my own foot from three to seven times a week, fumbling with different gauzes, patches, ointments, treatment protocols, showering with a uh, sleeve over my foot, not showering, freaking out over the ever-present fear of infection or amputation taking a stint in a wheelchair, all kinds of obnoxious nonsense for a very long time. All bitter fruits of a good deed gone bad. But God finally pitied me, sent me a girlfriend, a registered nurse this time. <laughs> nice touch. <laughs> Who was charmed by the blog I published as a chronicle of my failed adventure. In April 2023, I had a fourth surgery on my foot. The wound closed and has remained closed up to this instant. <laughs> Only yesterday, that was Monday, a doctor cleared me to walk while putting full weight on my foot. I've, I have confidence she'll permit me to climb back on my bike when I see her in a month. I raised $4,200 for Westtown Bikes not the 12,000 I had hoped to raise. I rode over 250 miles on that trip, about a quarter of the full distance. My recovery opens up a whole new array of questions and possibilities. Did I learn anything from that failure? Do I dare contemplate attempting that ride again, if only on an e-bike? What paths are open to me now to honor the life of George Floyd and put the kibosh on division? I don't have the answers right now, or what forms they might take, but such questions never leave you. In the meantime, stay tuned. for Lynn Katsoulis, that's all I have to say.
town.